Hi, this is Jared from Shunome, and today we're going to look at doors and windows in ARCHICAD 25. I gotten a lot of questions recently about doors and windows, so I thought I'd make a video on it. Let's start with looking at custom door leaves. As you can see in this image, the garage door is one that is not typically in the out-of-the-box library. If we actually look at the out-of-the-box library, there's not many options. We've got style 1, 2, and 3. If we go to other garage doors, we get slightly more options, but what's weird is if you want these better options, you can't get a garage door with a track. Frustrating, I know, but there's simple solutions, and that's to create our own custom panels. It's really easy. It's in fact so easy and common that I've done two things. In my template, I have created two custom ones that I'll show you. And then I also have the ARCHICAD elements needed to create more custom ones. So let me just go over here and I've got my favorites open, my garage door. If I go to the settings here for the styles, I go to custom door leaf. We can see I've got two here, a simple seven by eight and a frosted glass seven by eight. You can see that. Now it's important to note that I have the dimensions listed here for the leaf size because custom door leaves are not parametric. So if you were to put this into a door that's say, you know, eight feet tall or 11 feet wide, the door leaf will stretch to fit that size, but the proportions will be slightly off. So I find that anytime I need a custom door leaf, I am making it a custom one for every size I need, unless it's like really close. If I do a, a fancy door leaf and I need to go from, you know, two six to two eight, I might just let the proportions be slightly off because no one's going to notice that. So um, let's now jump over to my template. When you open up my template and you go to the floor plan, you're going to see you know, the site plan area, the house that says delete me, all this stuff so you can start modeling your project. But if you go down here in the corner, you'll see these two things here. And these are a bunch of slabs that are used to create custom door leaves. Basically, to create a custom door leaf, I'm going to do it really quick. You make the shape you want. Let's say this is going to be a seven foot by three foot door. And let's cut out a shape. Let's give it a curve. We're gonna make a we're gonna make a big outhouse door. So we've got, you know, here here's a custom door leaf, right? And all you do is you select that, go file, save uh, libraries and objects, save selection as, go down to door leaf, give it a name, call it outhouse door, and okay, it says congratulations, you've done that. Now it's ready to use. So I'm gonna quickly draw a wall. And then I'm going to put a door in there. I'm going to go up here to favorites just so I can use my typical interior door. So I've got the door there. You can see this in 3D. There's my door. If I go Command T, go to settings, change this to door leaf and handle, go down, create a custom or choose custom door leaf, go to house door. Yeah. There we have it. There's a door. Now, of course, we can get much more complicated with that door if we wanted to, say, add some frosted glass. We can add some frosted glass in there. Let's make sure that we didn't override the color. Oh, that's another thing is um, the color that's associated or the surface that's associated with this will come in. So let's make this blue just to see different. Um, now, to do recessed panels, it's really simple. Again, I'm just going to cut out a hole. You can use that and eyedropper that in, select this. You can see over here the thickness of my door is three quarters of an inch. So let's make it one half inch. And then I will elevate it. Sorry, I did whatever my elevate command is here. Elevate. Uh, for me, it's command nine. So I'm going to do elevate. And then I'm going to do um, one eighth inch. So that way the panel, the inset panel starts an eighth of an inch above zero, whereas the door goes, starts at zero. So now let's select all those. Go save selection as door leaf. We're just going to overwrite that because why not? Replace. Hit OK. And now we're going to go ahead and there's there's our weird custom panel. It's got the inset or the in, custom leaf. It's got the inset. It's got the little moon. Um, and that's that's really all that's going on. So if we look at my garage doors, I have the panels. And then to create the effect of 
individual panels, I have a we're looking over look over here. You can see uh this is a three quarter inch panel, here's a half inch panel that's offset by an eighth. So that that way I get the different panels of the garage door. So that's how we get these horizontal lines. If we zoom in really close, you can see that little recess. If we just had put panels right next to each other, they would just merge. So that's why I have these here. So I can have, you know, if I need a some sort of longer door, I can just stretch that. Similarly, I have this set up to have glass inset panels. And if we go back to this project and go over to the floor plan, you can see I have stuff I was working on earlier the project where it was going to be all glass and then glass up top. So I'm just basically using these two to create all those other options. So creating custom panels is super easy. In fact, creating custom anything is fairly simple. If we go back to libraries and objects and go save selection as, there's a lot of things here, object door, window, drawing title, etc. When we get down here with like cabinet door, door leaf handle, knob, shutter panel, window sash, these are all super easy ways to add more detail to your model. So let's look at handle and knob because it's the same concept as door leaf. You model with slabs, morphs, beams, columns, whatever geometry you need to do, and then save it as one of these things. I will say whenever you create an object in ARCHICAD, don't use other objects because ARCHICAD will start referencing the object. So for instance, we're going to make a door handle, this weird thing here. It's two columns and some slabs, just however I made a geometry. For this column here, if instead of using the column, I used the cube object in ARCHICAD, um, this object would then reference that sub object, which creates issues when you're copying things between files. So short answer is when you are creating objects with an ARCHICAD, don't use objects to create objects. Anyways, so we have this door handle. It's going to be the same thing. We're going to go file, libraries and objects, save. But before we do that, I'm going to drag this to the user origin. And this, this becomes important in a moment and I'll, I'll show you why. So let's go ahead. We've got this selected. It's sitting on zero, zero, the, you know, the origin of ARCHICAD. And we're going to go to libraries and objects, save selection as handle, and let's call it fancy. ARCHICAD says, congratulations, you now have fancy handle. And now let's go back to our outhouse door. So let's select the door and open it. And now we're just going to go to handle and we're going to change our custom handle. I've noticed sometimes ARCHICAD will glitch out and not show the handle. If that happens, change them both to the custom handle, turn them off, change them both to custom handle, and it will work. I don't know why it sometimes does that. Okay, so we can see you've got old handle, new handle. Let's hit OK. And there we go. There's our weird fancy handle. Now, if you look closely, I'm going to select this, you can see that the handles aren't aligned. What's happening is the center of this is actually the center of the door handle placement is the bottom corner of door handle. That's no good. But there's an easy way to fix this. Command option O is open object. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to select fancy handle and hit open. Now we're going to have to do a little GDL. Super simple though. Here's all the code that was created. We're going to come down here. The first place it says add right here. This is just moving the construction of this door handle, all the code to be at the bottom instead of the center. So you could delete that out, or if you just put an exclamation point that comments it out. So I'm going to do that. I'm not sure if I need to do this here in the 2D script as well, but I'm going to do it anyways, just in case James Murray will tell me if I'm wrong and then I'll learn something. But anyway, so you can see this same 0.0254 comma, blah, blah. We just put the little comment out there. We're going to save that. I just did command S, close it. And now if we look, you can see through the door that our handles are now lined up perfectly. So. That is how you make a custom leaf and a custom door handle. Let's look at some other things. So now let's look at ganging windows and doors. Really straightforward. I'm going to select this window here and we go down to fixtures and fittings. And all we're doing is turning off, checking these buttons. And what that's doing is turning off. Well, first of all, it's turning off the casing unless you go ahead and turn it back on so that you can have some casing is part of the ganging. But once you do that, it basically cuts everything off at the edge of the window and you can easily 
stack them, which as you can see I've done there. I'm going to jump over to schedules for a second because the way I handle ganging for window schedules is I have a property called ganged unit. And what I do is I list the schedule out, gotta wait for our head to update, and I group the schedule by ganged unit. So ganged unit A is these four things together, ganged unit B is these two things together. And I've talked about this more in another video, but how that works is I click on show headline, and I'm doing the first scheduled field, and under scheme settings my first field is ganged unit. What that allows is these to appear together in the schedule so that the window manufacturer, the whoever's supply, the window supplier, can see that these four things go together and these go together, uh, but that the individual unit uh, size is still listed. If you were to do this ganged unit here as one window, and there are Archicad windows that can do these kind of interesting shapes, you know, two above, one above, whatever, they would show up as one element, so one element on the schedule. So instead of being three by five unit, three by five unit, uh, two by three unit, it would just be a six by eight unit. Um, and my preference is to show the individual components rather than the one whole thing. So that's ganging. But sometimes with ganging, you want to the space between them. And that's where the rough opening comes into effect. So here you can see if I go to um, nominal size and tolerance, I have a rough opening on the center unit set to four and a half inches. What that gives me is, turn off everything else. It gives me a unit that looks like this. So if I stretch that over, I've got, you know, more space to work with. And then when we look at that in 3D, I get that, you know, proper thick post between. Now, one of the tricks to make this work really nice is if you s the uh, the thickness here is whatever the dimension of the window is. So if I make the window frame one inch, that little connector bit is one inch thick. Instead, I've set it to four and a half, which mimics a two by four wall. And then as you've noticed, I've then just placed a column there, a post, to give the effect of what it would be, which is an intermediate post. If you didn't set the frame to four and a half inches, you did it to the thickness of the wall, you would just have that whole thing thicker. But by doing it thinner, you get the effect of having the window unit be narrower than the wall, if that makes sense. Um, there are sometimes some issues where there's some like weirdness in the bottom corners for the trim. And unfortunately, with ArchiCAD, I haven't found a way to control the sill to be the same color as the casing. The sill seems to be always stuck to the window, so that's a limitation. The last thing I want to talk about today is how windows and doors relate to skins within a wall. Before I jump into that, I want to just cover how to handle windows that go through multiple walls. This can be either tile wall on the inside or siding on the outside. I've shown this in other videos, but it's it's worth repeating. So I've got a siding wall here, and that sits outside of my frame wall. And what's happening is there's just an opening that cuts through the siding wall. Fortunately, there's an amazing command in ArchiCAD that lets you automatically cut openings in elements. So I'm going to select this window, and then go up to Help Opening, Connect Create Openings from Selection. And I've actually got a, a button here, but I want to show everyone how to do it. So we select this window, and we go Create Opening. And that's it. Now we've got a hole. We turn off show openings. We've got a hole in that siding. It's great. It's also wonderful for if you have tile on the inside of like a bathroom and you want to use the window to cut a hole through that. It's, it's great. Okay, so let's look at the plan. In the plan, you can see that we have windows that are relating to the wall in different ways. Here we have a window where the casing sits on the outside of the wall. And over here, we have a window that has the casing inset into the wall. So let's look at what's happening there. If I zoom down here, got a bunch of windows. Go ahead and select this one and go to wall opening. Under wall opening, we've got a bunch of settings. I'm going to cover some of them today, but hopefully this is just an introductory that will help you. Under wall closure, we've got five different options. And that's these five different options. So we can look at them right here. Here's a solid wall. The big feature of the solid wall is that it sets back from the face of the wall without regard to the skins. So we can just say, I want this to be four inches back. We can say we want it 
negative one inches and it will sit in front of the window. Let's make it negative one foot just to see it really weird. You can see there's some issues with the casing there, but we could turn off the casing and fix that. But anyways, that, that solid wall does that. Over here, we have stuck wall. And this is the one I typically use. It relates to kind of standard stud wall. I'm just going to go ahead and make the casing a little bit bigger. So you can see here the casing is just in front of the window. Something worth pointing out there, the casing here, this is the offset from the inside face of the frame. So if I wanted it to set back a little bit from the edge of the frame or be all the way, you just make that change. The next one here is stud with siding. What this is doing is using the wall finish component and or setting the window back, whatever the finish skin is. So the next window type is very similar to that. It is the next is the brick veneer. And so again, we're setting back either by reveal depth, the number of skins. And so here we could actually say we want to set back the casing three skins and this window will keep going back. So depending on how this thing is set, you can do that. The last option is custom closure where you can really fine tune and mess with this. I've actually I don't think I've ever used it in maybe once in the past 15, 16 years, but it's there if you want it. So let's go ahead and look at all these in 3D now. So you can see, depending on what type of closure, we get different sills, different relationships to the walls, we get the brick sill. And there's a lot of settings here, so I don't want to go over all of them, but a couple of interesting ones to point is if you have brick veneer, you can turn on a brick sill, you can set all those settings nicely. You can also do a wall inset, so if you want to have a panel underneath it that comes back, let's say three and say whatever, just to give a sense that should have worked. There it is. It's on the inside. I must have done the wrong side. But anyways, you can you can mess with some of that stuff. Again, I've never used that, but it exists. So so it's there. Again, you can get a masonry arch, which I've definitely used at times. Uh, there's a bunch of different options. To be honest, these are great. These masonry arches are great for existing conditions. If you're doing something that is much more detailed, you might be modeling this separately with beams or columns or complex profiles or morphs and, and placing it that way rather than being set to the limitations of this. But uh, for existing conditions for generic stuff, uh, these uh, these arches are are super handy. I think that's about it. The one other thing to note that, and again, I think this is a glitch in ARCHICAD, but I don't know if it's ever going to get fixed, but when you change between types, say we're going to go from a solid wall to a brick veneer, the rough opening resets. So you can see the rough opening went from nothing to a quarter of an inch there. And then if we change this to solid wall, the rough opening gets bigger. So this is just something to be aware of when you are messing with these different wall closures. Rough openings keep resetting when you change them. But in general, I find I use either the brick or brick projects, or I use the stud wall. This is my typical one. Brick veneer sometimes, solid wall if it's a unique condition where I want it inset, like if it's a window in concrete or something. I think that is all I've got to share with you on windows and doors today. There's so much more to talk about with this topic, so please leave a comment and I can do more videos that talk more about doors, windows, or really anything else. I'm always looking for stuff to talk about. So thank you very much. Lastly, as always, I want to thank my daughter Madeline for editing this video. Thank you, Madeline. To everything I'm doing in these videos, is based off the Shunome open template. So head over to my website, links in the description below, grab the template, and you can start doing all this stuff. And thank you very much.